Hello. Greetings. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Let me just make sure that this stuff, oops. This stuff is on, it looks good. Hello and greetings, happy Friday. Denizens of the exiled lands and perhaps other, other worlds. Sorry, I'm putting my controller down. Uh, hi, my name is Andy Bendit. I'm joined today by the illustrious. It's me, it's Dennis. It's, it's me, it's Dennis. Hey. Uh, and then uh, off screen we have yeah, a lovely Nicole. Hello, I'm back here, 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 here. <laughs> I need to put a voice, I'm, I'm gonna put a reverb filter on your oh mic so you can be like, hello. <laughs> uh, so yeah, greetings. Uh, thank you for joining us on this fine Friday. Uh, we're back again with another uh, developer live stream, uh, going over uh, all there is to know about Age of War chapter four. So th for those of you at home who have been following along, the public beta for Chapter 4 is uh, now available as of actually yesterday, um, but we're going to be talking about things today. Uh, so we've got a packed show today. Uh, we're going to be going over uh, all the things to uh, all the things you can expect coming to you in Chapter 4 uh, of Age of War when it comes out April 2nd. Um, so we'll be going over a new... Uh, seasonal event that will be introduced with this update, um, expansions to the purge system, uh, fatality system, bunch of quality of life improvements, uh, and of course a whole slew of uh, new additions to the bazaar and the battle pass, which we'll be covering as much as we can today. But we got a lot to cover today. Um, before we begin, do you have any four words or anything like that, or any 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 insights or anything from chapter three we gleaned or anything? To add? Uh, well. I'm gonna say I don't All you think. Yeah, sure. Um, put me I on the spot, you. Andy, by the way. Wow. Oh, I know, I, I know. <laughs> I really put you on the spot. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to necessarily, I mean, I know. I, every, I like to mess it with you. Like I that. mean, every, every update that we do, you know, there's stuff that trickles over from one update to another, and um, we always look at the feedback that people give about things that they liked and didn't like, so we can inform ourselves going forward on you know the, the new stuff that we'll do. Um, we'll touch on some of that during the stream today, though. So I guess I don't need to get ahead of myself, and we can kind of just yeah, jump yeah, in. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So yeah, um, so let's see. So yeah, this is this is certainly chapter four. The inclusion of chapter four is a um, bit of a bit of a pretty pretty significant shift. Uh, as far as like our original plans were for like the entire like age and chapter system. Um, I mean, basically it was just like, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we had intended to add throughout the age and uh, we're now adding it with the fourth chapter essentially. Like, can you give any like, have we, I, I don't know if we've like really talked about too much about like why chapter four and all that. Like, uh, maybe we touched yeah. on that a little bit from last year. Yeah, sure. Maybe I, we can go into it a little I, bit today. I definitely too. can talk about that to, to a larger scale. Sure, yeah. Um, but. It was kind of two things that came to a head at the same time and just, you know, kind of gave us the realization that, hey, we needed to move to four chapters. So one was that we had a lot of stuff in chapter three that was mostly done and ready to ship, but not quite ready. Mm -hmm. And if we moved on to a new age, it might never see the light of day. <laughs> so that was the first thing. Um, and the other was a shift in the way we wanted to approach our timeline as a development team. Mm -hmm. I think I remember talking about this because it's a lot more of the boring stuff to hear, but basically it gives us more time to work on the stuff that come out in certain chapters. And it'll just mean that we get better, you know, deeper, higher quality things with the, the chapters that contain main releases. So going forward, the first and third chapters in a, a release will typically be where you find the bulk of the like new features, new functionality kind of stuff. Chapter two and chapter four will typically just be more content that builds upon the things that we've already uh, released in previous chapters or, or ages even. So you could see new events in the event system, you know, new events like the one we'll be talking about today, mm -hmm. um, you know, updates, so things like the loot updates and things like that. Know, camp placement stuff that that would all typically fall into the uh, more content oriented chapters in, in two and four, where one and three will be a lot more about features with content, mm -hmm. like sorcery, yeah. for example, or like yeah. purges, purges. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, great. So, uh, and then moving forward, I think the I believe the plan is yeah, like we'll have we'll have four chapters. 
for, yep. for each age moving forward. Yeah, so. and, and as always, I mean, anything is subject to change. Sure, if yeah, we yeah. wanted to do an age that was two chapters, we would not do that just because we've yeah. said we'll do four. Um, so, um, you know. Go. So, yeah. All right. So, first things first, I think I'm, we're just going to jump into the content of chapter four. So, the... Uh, some of you, uh, we previewed a couple of the things uh, in my drunken walkthrough uh, through the through the intro here. I saw someone in chat commenting about who who's, who's piloting. It's 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 me. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's drunk. I'm I'm not drunk. I promise. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, those are some of the new like building sets and armor sets that uh, we'll be we'll be showing towards the end of the stream. Um, but yeah, so one of the first things that is new to Chapter Four is a seasonal event, the Secret Hunt. Can we talk about that? Yeah, um, I wouldn't call it seasonal specifically, mm, uh, but it is an event that uh, we consider to be some like something of an evergreen mm -hmm. event. So, right now during this age, whenever the age yeah. comes out, the event will be active, and then at some point it'll go away, and then it can come back again. Um, we built it using the event system that we worked on uh, whenever the sorcery release came out. So we have the ability to create events and turn them on and off, and this will be one of those things. Um, it's an event with a, a handful of unique content and rewards that you can only get while that event's active. Oops. Sweet. So we are going to, what is it, the Castle of Al Mariah? Or do we want to show off the, uh, like the camp and all that first? Let's see. Yeah, let's go to the, go to the hub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's... Let's do it. All right. Ah. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so the way this, this event kind of starts out will be one of two ways for you. It'll be either you see the giant green beam in the sky, uh, which will guide you here. Uh, you guys uh, and, and gals might recognize this from the uh, Metcomosis uh, Spire repurposed for this event. So anytime you see a big beam in the sky, uh, you know there's probably something to find there. And uh, there's another form for this one, however. Uh, whenever it turns nighttime in the Exiled Lands or Sipta, you can be ambushed by were hyenas. And killing those hyenas will give you a little satchel of rewards and probably a map as well. And the map will, you know, guide you to this location. So... You come here to find out what's going on after you, after you you get this you know cryptic uh, skin map, <laughs> and uh, you find some people you can speak with. So we have several characters that we worked on for this uh, event that are fully voice acted. We also made it a new dialogue system, uh, and this this character here is utilizing that new dialogue system. Uh, they'll tell you about the event. They will teach you how to use some recipes for the event that you might need. And they also give you the option to opt out of the event. So if you don't want to be attacked by were hyenas at night, you can come here and say, hey, don't. <laughs> I wish to leave the hunt. Yep, you can leave the hunt. And whenever you come back and speak with her again, you can join again. And that'll just re-enable those ambushes on you. Uh, why you would want the ambushes? They drop teeth. Um, so whenever you collect those teeth, you can bring them to this vendor. And you can get a lot of different recipes. Uh, you can get the, the things at the top are, are for participating in the event. So, you know, we've got that war paint, the lore, the potion. And then the rest of the stuff is all cosmetic and, um, you know, what, like weapon recipes, placeables. Uh, so there's a lot of really cool stuff in here that, that we uh, have put into the event. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So going from there, once you know that and you learn more about the event, uh, she'll essentially teach you that there are some champions in the world. Um, but maybe we should do a little bit of a rewind and mm -hmm. talk about why this is happening in the first place. Mm -hmm. So whenever the Stygians came in the Age of War and they plowed through the world and took a lot of people out, you know, leaving a lot of bodies in their wake, one of the places that they of pillaged is the uh, ruins of El Mariah, which was once occupied by Dogs of the Desert, you might remember. And <clears throat> if you were to go to the siege, which 
trying to remember exactly where it was, sorry. It's a little bit northeast of where you're at. Um, actually, maybe we should use the tableaus as the point of reference. I don't know. Oh, it's yeah. Like, uh, so they, they took out a bunch of were hyenas whenever they came in. And now some events have transpired that have has kind of recalled Jebel Sog's attention toward the world because those were hyenas were taken out. And you'll be able to see that tableau location play out in real life as well uh, in terms of, you know, actually visiting the place. I'm sorry, fake real life, uh, e-real life. Exile so, lands real life. <laughs> yeah, so you'll see uh, in, in the tableaus here. Um, mm. So the Stygians have been defeated. That's where we left off in Chapter 3, right? The exiles have taken back the ruins of El Mariah in their timeline. And uh, they're, they're kind of celebrating, helping each other back up. And then we move forward and find that, continuing on, someone has located a little bit of a weird mm, entrance, you know? This, yeah. So it's like, hey, where's, where's that? What's Whoa, that? Whoa, what's this? They go down further Oops. and see that there's a cave. And then they keep going down. Oh. They see there's some, you know, scary markings on the wall and some glowy mushrooms on the ground. And they re eventually make it to an altar. Mm, now we can find all this underneath this, the castle, right? We can, yes. Yeah, yeah. So if you follow through the tableaus and oh, yeah, go I'll through to the end and, and go to, um, you know, the actual ruins themselves, you'll be able to find that cave. And that's kind of oh the, God, that's a you know, the, the basis for all of this starting. Um, Jebel Sog is not happy that his followers have been wiped out. And Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Terribly sorry. And as a result, uh, his, his great hunt has, has uh, been unleashed upon the world. So now we have all of these people kind of like in the Midnight Grove vying for his, uh, his favor, right? They're trying to become the champion of Jebel Sog. You're one of the people that can choose to try to become that champion. So you'll go around the map, find his champions, kill them and gather their teeth and earn his favor. Gather enough teeth and you can challenge his ultimate champion and become like you know the actual champion of Jebel Sog and there's some unique rewards and stuff that come into play with that as well which I think are really cool mm -hmm. and we also got some uh, top caliber voice talent as well. oh yes oh yeah oh yes oh yeah all right so finally found it where yep. the where's the hole Dennis well, if you if you remember the tableaus, you might see, you might have All seen right. something to the right of the stairs there. Let's figure it out together, Chad. Yeah. Okay, let's deduce. Let's deduce. This is an investigation mission now. So over by here, over here, over here. I'm just cloaked. Am I going the right direction? Am I am I warm? Kind of. No thoughts head empty. I don't know what I'm doing here. Wait. Let's figure it out together. Chat. How? Oh. We'll Ooh, show that later. Spicy. Uh. Wait. I'm so confused. I'm usually better at finding this kind of stuff. Wait, what? Wait. Where are the stairs? Chat, help me. Oh, my God. Go back. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm sorry. Wait. Inter press E to interact. Hello? Hello? What's this? Hello. I'm just a just a regular Stygian here. No problem. You don't see me. <laughs> not a conquistador. No, 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 no. Not as not as Ingarian mercenary whatsoever. No, 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 that nonsense. You know that malarkey here in Stygia land. Dude, where is it? <laughs> I don't know where it is. I'm so bad. Wait. Is chat making fun of me? They gotta be making fun of me, right? Owl is making fun of me. It's true. Dennis, please help me. Ghost. Oh. Right. Take take the shortcut. Ah, right, right, right. I forgot I have those those powers that I'm not using responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Oh. I found it. Thanks. Oh. It's so dark. But yes, this is the altar as depicted. Some uh, 
some evil-eyed folks on uh, Twitter might have recognized this picture that I snuck in as a reply. But yeah, okay. So let's see here. So yeah, this is directly under the Elmeri Castle. Uh, what do we? So what's uh, what's the story here? What can you can you tell me what? Yeah, I can. What, what is this? What is all this? So, uh, so whenever you speak with those those characters at the camp, they'll they'll tell you that you you essentially need to get these lures from them, um, and bring them to some specific places. They'll give you hints as to where to find those places. Looks like we're probably going to show you mm -hmm. where some of those places are at least. And uh, you know you'll bring the lore, put the lore on the altar, and then challenge the uh, the champion. Mm -hmm. All right. Of which and there are pungent a few. Words. So let's see. Boink. So is this? Let's see. All right. Now I need to use. Uh, cool. This is not the correct area. Hmm. I could have sworn this is the correct area. Yeah, it is, but you need to find uh, the rock. Oh, I need to find the right location. Wow. Ooh. What could this be? A peculiar rock? Oh, I should probably get myself a gear weapon, huh? Let's give ourselves something cool. Dink. Oops. Mm. Hold on one sec. Okay. Now can I do it? Am I going to get attacked? There we go. That's more like it. You're in creative mode still. So oh, yes. Am I still cloaked? No. All right. Time to get my ass whooped. A two skull boss. Oh, yeah. I haven't even, like, done any of my uh, attributes or anything like that. So this is going to be <laughs> extremely funny. Oh, wow. You know, there's another really important thing that you didn't do. Oh, which yeah. Which is also explained to you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. So this, is the, so this is an example of what not to do, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I didn't get the right things at the hub. So too, anyway, too I'm just gonna outfit. go die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. This is a this is old old callback here. Doink, 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 <laughs> doink. Well, oh, Andy, yeah. what are you doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. HR T -t -t toss. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I missed a key ingredient at the hub because I wasn't reading because I have no thoughts and my head is empty. But uh, the idea there is that you you got to be naked and wear a certain specific war paint. Yeah, so that's one of the things they tell you. In order to, uh, you know, get Jebel Sog's favor, you need to slather yourself in, self in his symbols and go without clothes. So the whole event Rip. is done naked. <laughs> Everything is naked, alas. Rip. So let's see. I'm going to go get that war paint again. So yeah, apart from some of these champions, can you tell us more about the event itself? Some things that I want to touch on. Let's see. So I'm going to go over here and get the things I need. I see the panther is still marked. Oh, that's good. Predator or prey. You no, are I need to talk to you. Lovely weather for a yeah. Hunt. Yeah. I need a gnarled fang. A gnarled fang. Well, Incredible. Treat? It is on Sifta as well. Yep. Nice. There we go. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> it's time to fight some panthers. Yeah, I'm not turning full nudity That's, on yeah. Twitch. I don't want to get banned. Okay. Now we fight again. Like animals. Ah! No weapon. I Where's your weapon, weapon going? I thought I had a weapon. <laughs> I don't have a weapon, right? I'm not supposed to have a weapon, right? You can fight him with a weapon. Oh. Well, God damn it. Well, yeah. all right. Uh, You're going to need some more paint. I'm going to need should, some more you paint. You should get yourself some paint. I should probably get myself some paint. Or we can show some other things, because I dying to the first champion twice in a row is not a great look for, for general player base. But, hey, you know, <laughs> everyone knows I suck, so it's okay. It's all right, right? Okay, let's see. I need the war paint. Um, 
Which it all hangs up. There we go. If Put you plan on dying again, you're going to want more. I always plan on dying. The war paint does get cleared when you die. Oh, okay. Let's see. Screw it. I will have my revenge. We need to have the uh, Twitch chat betting system, so <laughs> see how... Oh, my God. Uh, oh, I, I don't have roll bound either. This is going to be... Uh... Oh, wow. Wait. What <laughs> What happened? Oh, I can't believe it. What happened? I, 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 I... Was the, that the, one punch Andy? The power of Jabal Sag just, just over, overcame me, and I, 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 I emerged victorious, chat. Yeah, so after you kill the, the champions, you'll get some more loot from them. You know, you can you can mm, pull some more stuff off their, uh, you know, some good materials from skinning them as well. Mm -hmm. In some cases, there's some cool stuff that comes from skinning them. Um, more info. That's right. And is then, this a new interface we have? It is. What I think that's the... an entirely separate section of it our is. stream presentation. It is, yes. <laughs> but just, yeah, just, for those of you who haven't had a chance to play yeah. on public beta yet, we have some other cool interface updates. Oh, what's this? What the? Anyway. When we've done some early previews ahead of time, uh, we tried to not do the interface first, and everyone was like, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, excuse me. Whoa, what are the, whoa, what's going on here? What are these, what are these little icons here? Yeah, yeah and the, the, the reaction from previewees were like, whoa, this is great. Yeah, so Andy killed yes. one champion. There's several more. Each of them drops a unique uh, item that's used in a crafting recipe that you make at that altar that's back at the camp. Uh, and then that gives you the lore to fight the champion. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the current... The current champion of... Heavyweight, Jabal. world heavyweight champion of Jebel Sog. Uh, and some of you may have seen them on... A little, maybe a little taste of them on social media. It's the strange creature with glowing blue eyes staring at the camera right back at you. I'm sure there'll be, uh, I'm sure all our amazing content creators already have guides on how to, how to fight the, the weird bear. I had a lot of fun last night watching people just go through the stuff, uh, trying to figure out how things work and seeing the new mobs and freaking out and everything. So. Yeah, yeah. It's all it's always fun like the the when new stuff comes out and you don't know what's what exactly is around the corner that like initial discovery phase is like ah oh, it's just magic. It's, it's the best watching part. people try to figure <laughs> figure their their stuff out. Yeah. <clears throat> so okay, and then is the potion of the hunt like the big or is the beast of regalia the 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 big one for the final boss? I'm trying to remember. The potion takes you to to the final, the final boss, boss, right? Yeah, okay, gotcha. Right. right so right, this right. would be similar to the potion of midnight. Uh, that'll take you to a new boss arena. We can preview it at the very least. Yeah. I'm going to be able to die horribly. Hello? Hey. Oh. <laughs> What's this? Ooh. And then you'll also need the uh, Grand Champion lore that you can spawn. Oh, yeah. Because uh, that's what's crafted from all of the stuff that you uh, collect from the other champions. Oh, that's uh, yeah, that's not the right one. Is it the champion Grand. lore? Grand Champion lore. Okay. Uh. It's time for me to. Uh, <laughs> okay, well. Get flattened. Yep. It's a skill issue, I know. <laughs> yeah, so uh. there, there's a new a new mob, uh, you know, all new attacks and, and everything. Um, uh, there's a lot to say about the event that I, I'm just not sure how much I should say. Yeah, there, there's some stuff hidden, right? There's some mm -hmm. stuff that we haven't shown, and and I don't I don't know if we should out it all now or let people have fun finding it on their own. I let people have fun. That's kind of how it I feel too. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's all it's all out there right now in the public beta stuff too. So if you if you want to play, you can just check it out now, and it comes out for reals on April second. So. so you can just check it out yourself. You know, your your special stream hint can be that we did not leave the tavern behind. <laughs> yeah. So if you remember, you know, the tavern system that we've introduced that lets. NPCs come visit your base. Maybe check it out this update. Yeah. See what happens. 
You never know who might come wandering through your door to order a drink at your establishment. And a pizza. And a pizza. With pineapple. With pineapple. I was... No. <laughs> okay, so that is the season... Or, the, no, sorry, not, not the correct word. Uh, that is the Sacred Hunt, a new event coming to Chapter 4. Uh, we're not showing everything because we want you to figure everything out, figure things out on your own. But on that note, uh, of course, you know, the secret hunt is about, um, you know, the, the, the spilling of blood and, and the, the name of, I suppose, the, secret, the great order of things. And you know, part of the great order of things, I think, in the Conan universe is making the blood of your enemies flow and making heads roll. And so we're finally adding that proper. We got fatalities. So can you tell us about the fatality system? Yeah, definitely. There's um, a ton of work been put into the fatality system, and we've tried a lot of different things and, and versions of it, and uh, I think we landed somewhere pretty cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. every weapon right now has a unique kill animation for enemies that you, uh, that you otherwise would kill. You can instead perform a fatality on them. So whenever you take someone down and, and you hit them to a point where they would have died, they instead get suspended at one health and they stay there for about five or six seconds. Um, if you don't hit them, they'll fall over. But if you restart your combo on them, it'll perform a fatality. Hmm. Uh, and, and also I, I can, do my attributes. since Andy's fighting a wolf, I should point out that they- I'm dumb, hold on. I forgot to do my uh, attributes, absolutely my Absolutely destroyed bad. again, yep. jeez. I'm terrible. Man. This game is rough. This game is hard, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm terrible at this game. Hold on. I forgot to set my attributes. I have zero on everything. So, so yeah, uh, since Andy fight, was fighting a wolf and then got chomped in half, um, I'll point out that it only affects humans and it only affects NPCs. So you can't perform a fatality on other players. Um, but if you take an NPC down to the point where you would have killed them and they're human, they might enter a sort of day state. And during that day state, if you attack them again from the start, so you can't do it mid-combo, uh, you'll perform that fatality animation. You'll get a big chunk of health back. You'll get some stamina back. And you'll get a damage buff that lingers for a while. I think it's about a, a minute or so. Um, yeah, it's okay. bloody. It's cool and bloody. It is cool and bloody. Honestly, and the, so am I. The, the visual novelty of it is, is the, the more fun part, uh, I would say. Okay. Let's see if I can do this again. Maybe he's back for blood. Yep, and I'm gonna get bloody. Let's go. Uh... Oh, God mode's right there, Andy. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to do it like semi legit at the very I'm least. Totally I know, I know. Teasing. I'm sure. I'm sure. All right, all right. Let's let's make this dude's head roll. This is also a chance to happen when they die, um, so mm. that's not going to be guaranteed a kill every time. And like I said, um, one of the benefits to this kind of way of doing the fatalities is that if you're in the middle of a combo where you're hitting a bunch of guys, like you want to do wide sweeps and hit more than one enemy, you can just opt out of it. You can just keep doing the fat you can just keep doing the combo, skip the fatality, keep fighting normally. And if they do enter that state, that day state, uh, trying to get into the fatality, you can't. So whenever the fate. So, oh, oh yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. You're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Yeah, Nicole asked if you could be damaged during the finisher, but no, once the fatality animation starts, you basically are given immunity during that animation, and whenever you reach a certain point, um, you're no longer immune. Oh, I didn't get the thing off, dang. Oh, well. Nicole. What? Hmm. What am I doing? It's open. Dink, <laughs> dink. Let me kill you! Please. All right. There we go. Wait, can you let me do it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there goes his head. And then every weapon type gets their own unique fatality right now. So there's just the one per per weapon, but they're all very juicy, very chunky. Uh, mm -hmm. Do Let's Havoc see. and Malice. Hmm? Havoc and Malice. A what? Do Havoc and Malice. Oh. We'll be the dudes to rend. Nope, they're only for melee weapons. Let's 
uh, also, okay. Doink. Let's clear this, clear this mob real quick. Aw, oh, dang. Doink, doink, doink. Get out of here, dog. What the dog doing? I'm sorry. Yeah! <laughs> oh, and then I get a little fatality buff. You can see in the top right corner, or top left corner. Doink, doink. All right. So each weapon has its own unique fatality animation, you're saying? Yep, each oh, weapon yeah. type. So, you know, two-handed sword gets one, one-handed sword, axes, maces. Ooh, oh, katana? Awesome. Yep, katana. Oh yeah, that's what's up. And then um, this runs on like a like a paired emote system, right? And that actually kind of helps us enable other like potential ideas that we were wanting to do. Because I think a, a long time ago we wanted to do like a like a pet emotes. I can't promise anything, but I think <laughs> I wanted to say those kinds of things are like kind of contingent on paired emotes, which is like fatalities, I guess. Or... It's not that direct. Oh, gotcha. But you know the application is pretty similar. Yeah, that's my, that's my personal wish list thing. Give me, let me pet the dog, please. <laughs> Devs, please, please, let me pet dog. Please, 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 please. please. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, okay. Um. All right. So we got fatalities. We got bloody stuff. Uh oh. Uh, one of the other overhauls that we're doing. We'll get to the UI stuff in a minute. But I know there was some new inventory UI stuff that some people saw. But we also have some new follower UI or you know follower <clears throat> uh, like functionality in general got. Uh, overhauled with the update as well. Can you can you give us more like any insight on how that kind of stuff works? Yeah, as soon as you have a follower, it'll become pretty clear as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but gonna do this. we took, we we knew we were doing UI updates during this update, and we decided that there was a lot of follower stuff we wanted to address as well, and like responsiveness of your follower is one of the big ones. So now, if you if you interact with a follower, uh you get this UI in, in the middle where instead of having to interact with them and hold down a radial wheel to change their tactics and everything, you get it all in one sheet right here. And you can just go through and, and change the way you, you want them to behave. So you can determine how far away they follow you, how far away they should attack things or, or chase things away. Yeah, it's a lot more granular than I, I recall from the radio menus as well. So this, yeah, it's it, really it cool is. that you can like set all that stuff like on your own. And and the cooler thing is that these behaviors of course have memory. So you can set a guard to be defensive and stay, you know, in the spot that you put them if they're not following you anymore. But when they're following you, if you want them to be aggressive, they can, you know, go out and attack everything that you that you know you see. So, uh, and and you know, if you if you make the fall thrall uh, the thrall follow you before, it would wipe the behavior and set it to a specific one, and then you put them back in mm -hmm. the world and it goes back to default. Now it just remains what you set it to. Um, there's also updates to the actual radio wheel and the commands that you you use with them. Um, so if Annie can, if you can uh, hold down E now to see the wheel, um, the wheel itself uses this kind of built-in navigation. So you don't have to find your cursor on the screen and click on a little button. You get a a much more grounded uh, radial selection, and we've applied this to radials across the game as well. And with the commands, if you can go back to the commands, you can see they have a, a short list of commands that that um, they can do. So the one that's go here, that's contextualized. That's the one that's also like, you know, you can also attack things. Mm -hmm. um, if you can back off and just look at the actual commands again, then we've got the, sorry. Oh, man. sorry. Yeah, yeah, radio wheel away from him. Oh, my bad, my bad, right, right, right. So you can see there's the, the flee, uh, sorry, there's go here, defend here, and flee. Um, go here, I believe, is the one that's contextualized, so it will change the attack if you if you were looking at something, um, or at least the regular command does if you just look at something and interact. Um, flee will cause the follower to try to disengage and return to you. So before, if you remember trying to use the return command, uh, they would wait like two seconds and then start to run towards you and then get distracted or hit by something. Uh, or you press the button again and it resets the behavior and none of that stuff happens anymore. So now if you say flee, come, you know, it's saying come back to me, they're going to get away from what they're fighting. Uh, yeah, it will be the same on consoles as well. Um, so the other thing that you can't see but you will feel whenever you get this update 
is that this radial menu pops up really fast and you can cue the input for uh, what you want it to do. So Andy can tell it to, you know, it, it's, it's almost like to draw a point of comparison, like using the ping system in Apex where you hold the button down and you know it's coming up, so you move in the right direction, and as soon as you let go, it does that attack. So it's incredibly snappy compared to the way it was before, and it doesn't require an input to validate the action. It'll just validate on release. Just like that, yeah. So yeah, I'm holding it down, and then I, all I do is just like kind of gesture towards the, the direction that I want with the mouse. Yeah, and this is just on mouse and keyboard. It's pretty, it's reasonably responsive. Like, I like it. And yeah. I'm not much of a console, like, gamepad user myself, but I imagine it's also extremely, I mean, it's the whole control <laughs> use radials in general, so. You can it's still use the old commands. Um, so if you just want to, you know, use interact to tell them to attack or, oh, my thrill die? or come back. I think that we did change the order of what, um, a lot of people might not even know this exists, but if you single tap, interact versus double tap versus triple tap it'll do different things and i think we did change it so it, it used to be that move was part of that and that's not there anymore but i i think that single tap is go or attack and double tap is return um and there is still a triple tap command but i'm not sure if i'm mixing it up with go and return so you know you you can experiment with it really quickly and see exactly which commands do which for me i'm it's i'm just all about attack and return <laughs> personally <laughs> Yeah, flee. Okay, so if you triple tap, it does flee. Fowler cannot move there. Please. Please, you're drunk. Drunken Pirate Fighter. Or Drunken Pirate Fighter 3. You're drunk. To return. To flee. To me. That's cool. I really like these shortcuts. So if I have two followers, for example, if I have like max authority and stuff like that, do both... Um, do both uh, follow those orders at the same time? Like if I triple tap, do both my followers come back to me? Yeah, just like uh, it would have been before. They gotcha. follow the okay. same order list. Cool, cool, cool. I turned it to daytime because it is dark. It's impossible to see the screen yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So sweet, yeah. Uh, we know these kinds of like quality of life things are generally. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I, I guess it's also worth mentioning like the equipment um, panel over there on the other side got, got some love as well, mm -hmm. too. Um, so, so you can see all their yeah, stuff you like can on this their side now. And, yeah, yeah. And their stats right on that page. Oh yeah, and there's a t you can just take calls on them. All right, cool. Thanks. Okay, great. So hopefully, folks who are really into controlling their thralls or moving them around is hopefully they're uh, hopefully this makes it a lot easier to manage them because I know yeah micromanaging them can be a lot sometimes. Mm. Okay, so one of the things that's coming in Chapter 4, um, we're on Exiled Lands right now. So there's a couple small new camps in Sipta. Uh, we'll try to show some footage of that. Uh, I don't have anything immediately handy right now, unfortunately. But basically, they're like uh, kind of inspired by uh, the Siege of Almoriah. They're both uh, similar in their um, like construction, I suppose, in that, that they're destructible like mm -hmm. NPC bases. But they're much smaller in scale and scope. Uh, a for complexity and also B for like performance reasons as well. Uh, you know, when you have big buildings like that, that you know, lots of lots of things going on, lots of, lots of calculations going on that everyone has to see. You can, yeah, they uh, actually kind of... they behave a lot more like regular camps too because mm -hmm. um, they don't have a constant onslaught of enemies like the siege does. Um, you know, the siege is a, a very unique piece of content, and we we've always wanted to use that same building system to just make smaller camps. Um, that you, you could, you know, siege and, and take what's out of it with the, the tools that you have. So if you um, visit those camps on Sipta, you'll see that they're much smaller. They're constructed like a, almost like a player would construct a base. You know, they use the same building pieces and they're filled with enemies that will die and not respawn until sometime later, just like a normal camp in the game. Uh, with like the standard 15 minute damage. Oh, dang. I saw someone in chat asking for the, the great axe. Uh, finisher. So. You can just spawn like a ton of do nothings. Mm, okay. And he'll hit them all in one hit, all in the same spot. Mm, okay. Kind of fatality on top. Okay, cool. <laughs> you I might want to get rid of your follower though. Oh. A little aggressive. Meh. Let them be. We're showing off how how good the the controls are. I'm just gonna kill the follower. It's They're fine. not gonna live anyway. It's fine. <laughs> Their time has come. Their time has come. So can can NPCs perform finishers on you? No. Come here. We, we talked about it. 
Oh, I didn't get to him in time. Follower blocked me. Come on. Come on. Give me a chance. Give it to me. Doink. There you go. Oh, what? Oh, bummer. Come yeah. And restart. Yeah, yeah, what's up? Can, can they hear me? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if this one that you're going to be able to answer, Dennis, but uh, someone was asking if there is a possibility in the future where you could get a command for your following thrall to attempt to flee if you're killed. I don't know if that's a possibility at all. Oh, so there, I, I wish that I had more information about this off the, the top of my head, but I'll, let's just say, yeah, we'll, cool. we'll say that for now. Oh, that's great. It is a possibility. There can be some more stuff coming in. There might be some stuff baked into their behavior now that kind of pads that blow a little bit. Squish. Squish. Fatality. Finish him. Okay, uh, so let's see. But yeah, so uh, the the small buildings, they uh, enemies don't respawn until the base resets. Uh, base resets occur if no one is nearby. The boss is uh, defeated and no players are nearby. I think those are the same rules as Almorai. I'm not sure exactly. But I don't think the boss needs to be defeated for them to respawn. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, one. gotcha. You just have to not be there, basically. Gotcha, cool. Okay, and then... Moving on, hopefully we'll try to show some of the SIPTA camps uh, in future social media content. Also, you can just check it again online right now. Uh, all this content is available for you to check out right now in public beta and will be coming out April 2nd. Uh, so in addition, so, okay, we still have more things to cover that's uh, in terms of like features and balance stuff. Uh, and we have new purge encounters, uh, mostly focused on like high level purges, I believe. Uh, so there's Four new encounters, if I recall correctly. Yep. There's oh, sorry, yeah, uh, you, yeah I'll go you can give it the rundown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. So um, we've got a wave of thieves that will come in, and the we the thieves are cloaked by the invisibility spell. They'll try to sneak past everybody, unlock your doors, and go straight to the treasure to pick it up and carry it out. Um, there are champion enemies that essentially have a kind of like a an entourage that comes with them. Uh, they're they're a bit beefed up compared to your your normal uh, enemies, and they they move in formations. So when you see it, it'll stand out. It's pretty cool. Um, we have a golem wave. There's actually a couple golem waves, but one of them is is uh, jarhead golems that will come as kind of a siege mechanic mm -hmm. to try to blow your walls up. And there's also a really cool wave with a sorcerer that spawns. And you can see there, yeah, so here's some, some uh, those look like jarhead golems. Uh, there's glare on the screen, so it's a little hard to see. But mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> So they'll, they'll come in and try to blow your walls up. And then the last wave that we have is one that a, a sorcerer will spawn and begin to summon a meteor from the, the sky and rain meteors on your base. So very destructive, very cool. Mm -hmm. Let's see if... Some of that off too. Yeah. Yes, the the meteors can be harvested. There are de definitely different types of meteors in there. They uh, little sound. they can be stopped as well. Uh, you're not guaranteed to just be smashed by meteors because they're there. So it's a thing to keep an eye out for. So is this uh is this meteor guy? All, is this whole casting animation like a callback to spell weaving from Age of Conan? <laughs> Uh, not directly. Mm. It, it is it is really intentionally meant to draw your eye, so it's a oh, lot yeah. harder to miss because the destruction will be significant, pretty, pretty massive. Yeah. yeah. Let me uh, let's see here. What can we? Ah, yeah. So this is a, yeah. This is a video of the base that we were in earlier uh, in the introduction, and yeah, this is the meteor base just like opening up. <laughs> there they are. Yeah. <laughs> so this should be uh, f fun to defend. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a high level mechanic. Yeah, I, yeah. I believe it's nine and ten. Um, don't quote me. It's raining. It's well, I was gonna say it's raining men, but it's not. It's raining fire. Could be raining golems. I think those are fun. Yeah. Yeah, so there are some golems, you know, making contact with the walls. 
and they're exploding. So these and more you can expect with high-level purges coming to you in Chapter 4. Um, and then also, something you may have seen from the intro as well, is a new siege weapon, the Ballista. Oh, there they go, exploding everywhere. Very good. Okay, so yeah, let's check out the Ballista real quick. Got to go to the base. Oh, there's so much to cover. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay, go over here. So the Ballista. Ballista is a brand new uh, siege uh, structure that players can build. Uh, it is. Uh, it requires a trebuchet base, I believe. <clears throat> but then when you build on top of it, you, of course, can... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Yeah, so we actually renamed the trebuchet base. Uh, you've got your siege foundation, and now there's a siege weapon base. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So you build either, once you place the weapon base oh. down, you can build up either a, a ballista or a trebuchet from that. Um, ballista unlocks a little bit earlier. Uh, I believe it's 10 levels later. And uh, the engineer feat is a prerequisite. So you'll have to know how to make those trebuchets to begin with mm -hmm. to be able to make it. Uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, so yeah, like Andy's showing now, you can literally jump into it and pilot it, aim it around. It's a lot easier to hit targets with than the ballista is. It has a little bit different purpose though. Um, the ballista will, or sorry, the trebuchet will deal a lot of you know splash damage, hit a lot of stuff over a big area, and the ballista is a lot more focused. So you can see, uh, Andy can see the inventory of what can be crafted right now, and there are balls and bolts. And the bolts are really anti-personnel. They're very, very strong against people and uh, other wildlife, you know, monsters. And the bolts are, are, or sorry, the balls are really a siege device. So if you want to knock down some doors or walls, you want to use the balls instead. Um, the other hidden functionality of the ballista is that it absolutely annihilates avatars. So a star metal bolt. Uh, with a full charge on the ballista, like Andy's charging it up right now, which increases the range and damage that the ammunition deals, it'll kill an avatar in two bolts. So you can have Aww. two ready and loaded up and just take them out as the avatars come up as an anti-avatar defense if you're present. Um, but yeah, now that he's piloting it, he just has to hold down right mouse, uh, you know, alternate mm -hmm. or heavy attack to charge it up. It saves its, its uh, memory over, you know, the duration of the charge. So if you let go halfway, it might scoop forward a little bit, but it, you'll hear a notch yeah, click yeah. and it'll, it'll oh, lock in. I missed. Uh, and then just fire, just normal attack to fire it. So yeah, I'm just holding down right mouse button. And then presumably, yeah, like when, when a big old avatar is knocking at my door, I can just shoot at it. Let's see if I can get this. No, I don't want to kill panthers on the... I already killed one panther. Okay, so there's a bunch of bullet drop. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fine. It does have good range, but you do have to correct for the, the fall. Yeah. Off. Oh, no. I can't seem to get out. All right, I'll just blow oh, it up. That's there, fine. it's out. Great. We did it. <laughs> and you can push it around, too. So you can you can aim in a bit of a cone uh, in front of it, and you can push the Siege Foundation around just like a, a trebuchet to get you know major retargeting. Uh, people are asking if there's a chance that we'll see thralls being put on ballista in the future. Yeah, so that was part of our plan, and like we wanted to ship it for this update, but we didn't get those done 100% in time. So it is likely that in the future thralls will be able to man both trebuchets and ballista as uh, you know base defense options. Oh, there's also a little bit of more cool stuff about it too. Uh, it's, it's probably going to be really hard to show here, but. There's actually penetration on the bolts and, and, and the balls too. So like if you have if like you set this up to defend against a, a purge and there's like a row of enemies coming in, uh, you can charge up a ballista and you know, oh, just get a shoot bunch the of ball, collateral. Right? Yeah, it, Hell it, yeah. It'll blast through them all and knock them all down to the sides and stuff. Uh, there's knockdown on it. My fantasy. <laughs> Very good, thank you. Okay, yeah, and then, yeah, I see some people in chat asking, like, hey, can we see some stuff in the season pass? Can we see some of the stuff in the space? We will get to that. Sorry, there's still there's still a couple <laughs> things we wanted to get to yeah. gameplay-wise before we start talking about the other stuff. I know, there's a, there's a lot to talk about in the stream. Um, see, okay, we got, we got the siege item. Next up, okay, 
we, uh, if you were watching towards the beginning of the stream, you saw some, what appears to be some changes with the uh, player menu and inventory management. So now you want to jump into talking about what actually these are? Yeah, uh, there's a lot here and I'm definitely not going to hit everything. So mm -hmm. if you want to experience it, you know, wait for the update or check out the, the public beta because it's all there mm -hmm. as of yesterday, as Andy said. Um, a lot of this started as friction that we had in play tests with like just trying to manipulate stuff in our inventory easily. Um, and a lot of the time with gamepad, like we try to split our time between mouse and keyboard and controllers so we can see what it's like on both sides of the fence and on controller, it was really rough. So um, we did some stuff that we think benefit both. And some of the biggest stuff is like the, the functionality of buttons across the bottom of the screen is standardized now. So if there's an input or action for an item type, that button's always in the same place. It doesn't really just like disappear. Uh, you know, we've got a placeholder for things that literally don't have an action, but it should be much less confusing, like what an item actually can do when you select it in your inventory. Um, we changed like stack splitting, uh, and, and, the, and the fastest way to split stuff is literally just to right click it now. So. Uh, you know, we, we find that most of the time when we're splitting stuff, we're not trying to get pull one out of the stack. We're trying to get to a, you know, a, a lesser number of what is usually a stack of hundreds or thousands. Um, so it's much faster to split and move items now. Uh, one of the super coolest things is the quick stack function. So hmm. Andy, I don't know if you want to place down a... Um, I don't, but what is that? Sorry. <laughs> A container, if you can open any, okay. can, any container or a crafting station, whatever, anything that has an inventory. Um, sure, yeah. Let's see. We, we added a thing called quick stack, which means it will take anything from your inventory that's already in a container and move the rest of them in. So if you just move one of those five stacks of iron bars over and a stack of the, the uh, shaped wood, um, you see there's a button on the bottom of his inventory called quick stack. If he clicks that, it'll move all the iron and shaped wood from his inventory into the, uh, well, it, it should, would, it should move it all into there. Yep. <laughs> it's an internal build. Sorry. Still, still, yeah. you know, it's not, not finished yet, but that's the intent. Yeah, sorry. We're on, we're on a beta build. Oh, rip. Uh, try actually just try with a regular container. Cause I, I kind of wonder maybe the bench. If it's yeah. Just the bench. Yeah, yeah. It might be. Cause it's a dismantling bench. Yeah. Right? That's my bad. Of course I didn't pick a container and I picked the, the most like one of the weirder ones let's see sure why not hello please please there you get a cabinet right at the front door eh. okay quick stack Bam. there we go <laughs> So that makes moving stuff into containers a lot easier. Um, That's really cool. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah, and you oh. see it changes It changes into a give all button. So if you click it once and you actually want to move everything, you can move, move everything over. Um, I really there, like that. Yeah, there's so much that goes into this one. Item filters, um, sorting items is a lot different now. Um, if you could just like go back into the admin panel, and sorry to ask you for more stuff, but give yourself like some random stuff. Weapons, armors, you know, building. There you go. You got, it's all in your action bar. Okay, yeah, stick it in your inventory. And then, um, so we changed the way filtering and sorting works. And if you go up to the type bar up there for sorting, um, whenever he selects like heaviest first, for instance, you'll see it'll resort everything like it would have normally. Um, if you go back to no sorting, it'll actually keep that sorting mm. so you don't you don't lose the sorting that's there and now you can move stuff around within that that uh, filter that you previously chose um and everything sorted by type is like really logically thought out now <laughs> instead of just being a random uh you know a mishmash of of what order things would be in we try to sort things so you can see andy's got uh in his inventory when sorting by type he's got all like the uh, like a lot of the raw crafting, like plant stuff up top. And then he's got all the bees and then all the, the weapons. All it's, it's all just grouped together, basically. Um, and then the buttons are dynamic as well. So you can see he has four item filters at the top up now. Uh, it's based on the stuff that's actually in his inventory. So you can turn those on and off. Cool. 
Cool. Uh, just to get a, a finer view of what exactly is actually in your inventory. Oh, now we're talking about armor is a consumable. Understood. Mm, Technically mm, true. Mm, yeah. <laughs> People are tools mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. be used. I'm a tool. I know that. Uh, then this. on Thank the other you. panel, we've got the whole other panel over there as well, too, where if you just click on one of the recipes, you can see um, hopefully more clearly what it takes to actually make that item is like one of the main the main goals there. So we try to communicate the inventory about the selection uh, a little bit better and what it takes to make it a little bit better as well. Yeah, it's great to see it's just like all the requirements just right there and take some of the guesswork out, which is good. That's great. Yeah, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything major, but there is a lot to it. I'm sure we forgot something. There's so, there's so much to cover here. I'm sure a whack or eradication is just like, no, no, talk about the thing. <laughs> uh, okay, so that was quality of life stuff. Uh, I actually think that covers all the gameplay stuff going on, maybe? Unless there's more stuff that you want to show off to. That's what I had on my notes. Oh, yeah. So there's that, you know, when we did the last patch, um, there was a lot of uproar about not being automatically like your character, not automatically facing while you're rotating or when you're attacking. So if you just come into the gameplay options and turn on that auto face forward on attack, it'll follow your cursor like it did in uh, chapter two. two. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I like that. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Dennis. Yeah. Wow. The de <laughs> Devs are listening. It's amazing. Thanks, Dennis. Appreciate it. I, I know this was like a like really hot topic with folks, um, you know, after Chapter 3 launched. Uh, and so, you know, we we are listening. We are working on making things good. Like, you know, at the end of the day, we want to make a game that's fun to play. So. All right. Um. So let's see. Is there, uh, and then I think. Oh, I think, hold on. I think we're also so, tweaking stamina a tiny uh, bit too. Sorry. One other thing. Sorry. Someone did ask, what about magnetic foes? Um, I went through a number of enemies in the game and and fixed their rotation so they shouldn't be as magnetic. I didn't do every enemy in the game, so there may be some that we that are still too hard or not. Um, to give you guys a baseline, we actually pulled data for enemies that had a significantly higher kill death ratio than they did before the patch. And I hit um, a combination of those enemies that were, you know, really egregious and the ones that are involved in the event as well. So we could be sure that the stuff that people will see the most during this update will have the most uh, forgiving rotation. And if there's other stuff that you see that feels like a problem to you, just report it to us and, you know, we can take a look. It doesn't take terribly long to make the adjustments, uh, but as always, it's bound to our release schedule. So once we do see it and see that people want something adjusted or think that it should be, you know, we can assess if we, if we agree and it'll come out in an update. update. Yeah. Yeah. See how we can fit it into our schedule because we're always working on like stuff and you know, the people that would fix stuff is also working on new stuff. So it's, yeah, it's just a matter of like juggling and allocating resources properly. Yeah. Someone asked what's the enemy mm -hmm. that kills the most players. Oh. I don't have the one that kills the most players, but the one that had the highest increase, I believe, was the Imp King that went up like 300% or something <laughs> like that. Um, his charge attack was absolutely bananas. Like, he could spin in circles and, and chase people with it. <laughs> Go Imp King. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, coupled with the fact that he's probably fighting people that are naked and maybe haven't played the game before. Mm -hmm. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's easy to mm -hmm. understand. And I think, uh, what is it? I think in addition to some of this stuff, we're, we're making a couple <laughs> tweaks to stamina recharge rates or something. I'm not really sure. Oh, yeah, it's, I know it's, we tested some of that. It's actually pretty minor. Um, I don't. It might even be hard to notice if, if people are watching. But if you exit creative mode, um, so there's there's oh, kind of two things. Stamina. Yeah, I yeah, stamina. you'll want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's there's two things. Um, the first is that rolling thrust had the stamina bonus oh. removed. So I don't have roll bound. Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's okay. If you do rolling thrust now, you'll still get a penetration buff, but you won't get a stamina reduction on the next ha attack. And the other thing, um, which is, it's perceptible, but I think it's, it's generally hard to tell, is that stamina doesn't regenerate in 0.1 seconds after you start, or after you spend it or deplete it now. It waits one full second. 
So technically, it's ten times longer, uh, but uh, or you know, but it, it's it's a very brief when you actually of time. play it. Yeah, <laughs> in, in in practice, it's a lot more. It's, it's one of those things that you look at the numbers in the patch notes and you're like, that's an insane difference, you know. But when you play it, you know, you can feel it. There, it does feel like there's a little more grit in combat. There's a little bit more weight. Yeah, there, there's a little bit more uh, commitment to what your actions are, but uh, it comes back very fast still. And the big thing and the best thing about this uh, is that it, w it was specifically to find a natural way to prevent infinite roll spamming. So you can still roll forever, but in some cases you'll be forced to wait that, that you know, whatever one seconds plus the time to regenerate the stamina back because, you know, you've gone into to stamina debt, so you need to regenerate what you can't see, and then you need to add that second on top of it as well. So um, you can still roll a lot, but you can't roll forever uh, with no break. And when it comes to balancing that break, like, we're, we're really on the edge of a knife here. If we make it too long, it will be a problem for a lot of people. If we make it too short... I mean, it's already too short, so you already see how that's a problem. So I'm trying to just nudge it in the right direction instead of making it you know, swinging too far one way or the other. People are rioting. They want to see that dog. The dog? They want to see the big, the dorg? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. It's a good dog. It is a good dog. It's a very good dog. Maybe one of the best we've made, I think. And he's lost. I am lost. <laughs> I'm always lost. You, know, you know, just because I'm wandering doesn't mean I'm lost. <clears throat> just finding myself. Thank you. Any new romance option? <laughs> <laughs> no. The dog. Oh, someone the else was like, well, if there's an imp king, is there an imp queen? <laughs> it's you. <laughs> yeah. It's you. You're the imp queen. <laughs> Slay. Okay. Doink. It's a dog. This is one of the, one of the new pets. that dog? Can I pet the, unfortunately, we can't pet the dog. It's a good dog, though. Ooh. Can I make it follow me? Follow me, please. So yeah, Zingarian dark guard dog. Uh, so yeah, let's look at some more of the stuff that's coming in the bazaar and the battle pass. So we saw some of the tableaus, but here's a preview of some of the new items that are coming by. Zingarian mercenary armor is the rank one reward for the chapter four battle pass. That's what, uh, Oops, well, that's what I was wearing, but you can't see me because I turned myself invisible, but... Yeah, we have a general theme for battle passes, usually, and this one is Zingaran, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is kind of, uh, like, historically Spanish-themed. Yeah, I saw some people in chat saying, like, oh, it looks like, like Conquistador armor or something yeah. like that. It's like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything Howard wrote is basically based on something else that already happened. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, all of his cultures have a uh, real-world analog, uh, for the most part. Yeah, the rapier is really cool. Mm -hmm. I, it's one that, like, I was hesitant to add a rapier for a very long time because I was like, oh, that could be an entire weapon type. Uh, but as time goes on and, and, you know, we don't invest in adding different weapon types into animations, it's just more, makes more sense to give cool weapon skins. Mm -hmm. And if we ever add them, we can just convert it. People love yes. them poking swords. That was a big, big, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. E epi, epi, like the, not clay the rapier, but it's another like mm. pokey sword. It's featured prominently in many Souls games. I'm also just very EP all the time. So it just works out. Oops, sorry. <laughs> big EP. <laughs> big EP. That's me all the time forever. So I won't go into all the battle pass stuff because you, you guys will be able to see uh, when this comes out on your own, but a preview of things to come. Lots of Zingarian stuff. Uh, and like curved walls for fortress. Ooh, I don't want to go too far here. Emblems, ha <laughs> on guard. Uh, currencies, placeables, tables, tapestries. The good actually, stuff. I hmm? actually do want to show the the new Poitain armor. Oh yeah, sure. Just because it's absolutely sick. Is it the this? Nope. No. Go up. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, no, sorry. It's Zingaran. It is Zingaran. Oh. Actually, I, I'm, I read chat and uh, my brain... My oh, brain got gotcha. Because I'm wearing the captain stuff right now, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I think the mercenary stuff was... Well, no, this about, is all the mercenaries. I'm talking stuff. about the lance one. Oh. The lance one? I thought that was Zingaran. 
full mode activated. <laughs> oh, yeah, point, yeah, it's, point, it's point 10. 10. Okay. Yeah. Which one? Heavy? It's no, it's an armor set. Oh. Wait, what? Oh. So would it not? So would it be the Cavalier? No, it's not that one. Oh, but I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh, Knight? Yes. Jousting land. Oh, yeah, yes, okay. There it yeah, is. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything gets names after we make it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to remember what things are called. Okay, 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 okay. Blink, blink. Knight Helm. Knight Greaves. Oh, yeah. All right, prepare. Oh, yeah. Wait, I need to. I'm still invisible. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I need to. I need to add the lance. Give me the lance. All right, hold up. Where is it? Point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that chat has no idea what is going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just love this like little viewport. Oh, like, okay. hello. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> that is a large lance. What, uh, wait, is this? You have to be on a horse to use it. Oh, uh, right, of course. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> Candy cane. <laughs> yeah! We need battle standard weapons like this. I feel like I've talked about this before, but there was one time where uh, when we were making the sorcery update, the uh, Katan assassin spear was like 25% too big, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, it looked like a, like a soul's great weapon. <laughs> Uh, it was so rad, though. <laughs> I wanted to ship it like that so bad, but I, I couldn't bring myself to, of course. Wait, you showed the battle pass, right? Mm -hmm. I showed some of the battle pass okay. stuff, yeah, yeah. Aw. Yeah. Perhaps. Oh, my. I don't know which follower follow. There's a up. capstan for this uh, set as well. There's a what? The horse armor, the capstan. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is it, right? Or is this different? Oh no, that's right though. There's a there's, there's a the one. that's right. I did see that one. Yeah, yeah. It has like the clan emblem on it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw it over here. That's right. Eh, People please. love the frog helmet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's the best. Frog knight for the win. Wait, no, I don't want to. Crouch on. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of this corner. Okay. Thanks. Trust me, I'm a professional. <laughs> there. <laughs> okay, that's much better. Blink. You're gonna get back on the wrong horse. <laughs> Please. There we go. <laughs> Someone's like, good to know you play like I do. <laughs> I'm very good at this game, okay? Andy's actually one of the top PvPers. I am, I am <laughs> top 500 NA. <laughs> That is a lie. I am. I am not a. Uh, oh, people know. <laughs> <laughs> In case there was any doubt, I am awful at this game, but that's okay. The, the, the point of games is to have people of all a, a wide breadth of skill uh, um, levels be able to enjoy what they want <laughs> in this game, right? I don't have to be. I don't have to be like a crazy APM PVPer to enjoy Conan Exiles. No, no, not the dog. No, <laughs> no, no, I won't. Oh, there you go, buddy. Are you hurt? You okay? Oh, buddy. Okay, Uh, so then, yes. So then there is also, you might see some like real fast uh, flips of uh, the things here, but uh, <clears throat> yep. night jousting gear. We have an onsen set, which I d didn't, I need to get a thing of real quick, actually. Just give me one second. But yeah, we got a we got a Yamatai Onsen set, which looks amazing. Let me see if I can. This is just like a. Ooh yeah. So this is more like. Wait, let's see if. Is this... Yeah. Someone's like, I want Andy as a thrall. Can we please? We, uh, can I, can we I just have... show up at the tavern one day? We we'll have, have something make like that. Costume. In... Ah dang yeah yeah. We have something like that in Age of Conan. The, uh, oh, our emblems? No, no, the followers are. Oh, the, the mini GMs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 
And people kept thinking that they were being whispered to by I know. That was, a, that was a fun little prank. Yeah, yeah. Back back in Age of Conan or MMO, we had like a little pet that summons a little game master character. It's just like this tiny human that follows you around. And then they send you whispers to tell you that they have answered your petition. And But it's in the same color and font and actually uses real GM names. So people are like, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting messaged by GMs. Uh, well, well, what is this? I... <laughs> Okay, yeah, so uh, let's see. Yeah, so we got Yamatai Onsen set, which has a whole bunch of different parts, I believe. Yeah, this night set. Uh, let's see, is there any other super rad stuff? What's this? Ooh. There's a whole dungeon built you could explore. Oh, I mean, yeah. I guess actually that whole base, you know, is built with this the parts all of the new set. Mostly yeah. new stuff, yeah. New. The walls outside are new. Yep, this is all the various pieces that you could have gotten from the battle pass as well. I think the walls, let's see here, battle pass. I think like one of the earlier awards that we just talked. Yeah, so this is all like Zingarian wall stuff that you can get from the past. I think we are, we're also expanding the dungeon set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see those crowded walls there are part of the the new. Oh, high horse. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'll have to go underground to see the rest. Of oh, oh gosh, I forgot where the door was. Is it here? There's four pieces. Uh, no, there's an actual door with two guys, and you put a. Oh, that's right. I put the, the curios. Or was that the main entrance? I thought okay, that was yeah. the main okay, entrance. Okay, so turn around. Mm. And there's a door, that one right there, that ah. cool gatehouse, I think. Hi, horse. You gonna gonna follow me down in the dungeon? He is. Oh, okay. Someone's like, she? I hear crying. Yeah, there's a lot of crying <laughs> in the dungeon down here. <laughs> this is actually me talking to Andy after the stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Yeah, this is actually yeah, this is actually my room. This is a recreation of my my <laughs> office currently. I just have I just have these palisades all around my uh, my computer, keep me in check. Got my blinders on. My 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 pink argyle uh, stockades. Oh, hi horse. Eh. Hmm. How you doing there, bud? All right. Oh, my God. You have a dog and a horse following you through the dungeon. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wait till you guys see what he has to squeeze into next. Oh, my. Oh. oh. So here's another part of the expanded set. Uh, uh, yes, hello. Uh, <laughs> hello, we would like to order... I don't know. I think the final name for it was Cistern, so you can make a, a sewer. There's some, new sp some spider webs you can decorate with, some cobwebs. Uh, and then we've got uh, various pieces to build underground sewers as well. So there's like straights, turns, and junctions. Yeah, so you too can create, recreate everyone's favorite parts of Elden Ring and Dark Souls. Sewer mazes. Oh. Well, we didn't add a Blight Town set yet. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah, no, no swamp me. Uh, poison swamp. <laughs> yeah, no poison oh, hey, swamp bud. set. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my guy. Are you in my walls too? Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah, right, let's see. Wait. Oh, yeah, this is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> actually i put that in there during a tour <laughs> i forgot about it <laughs> but yeah we made a sarcophagus you can open and you can get in and out of it but I you can expect you can also put thralls in it so um i, I think it might have been uh well someone asked if, if, if you could put a, a zombie in it so we did uh, wait can i get in yeah you might have to move a little bit because you need to look inside Oh. Because right now you're just looking at the door. I and see. Then, yeah. eh. Hello? Am I too thick? Oh. And then if you interact again, it should shut the lid. I'm hiding from my horse. <laughs> yeah. They can. know where I am at all times. Is he still there? <laughs> uh, this is, um, you know, more, more stuff, more new stuff. Um, Stygian themed. Placeables. I just like the cats. Yeah. Let's be real. Okay. Bye, horse. Oh, pet spider. spider pet, some, mm -hmm. Yeah, here's the spider decorated room. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Content, cool. content warning arachnophobia. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, we really like spiders. Yeah. Spiders, cobwebs, the corpses hanging from the ceiling. Oh, my God. This is actually a sewer maze. I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, you won't find out. Ah, uh, you won't. I think you saw the. Uh, Oh, this is the entry. Oh, hi, guys. I think you saw the main stuff, though, with the... Uh... <laughs> okay. The Stygian room. Yeah, the yeah. Room. That's really what there is to see down here. 
that and plenty more coming uh, at new, you. I think that's a new ladder, too. If I'm not oh, is it? Yeah. That's the iron ladder to match the uh, sewer set. Lost dungeon ladder, yeah. Oh, wait. Okay, they didn't remove Fink. Good, good. Hi, bud. Hi, bud. Hello. All right. Gosh, that's a lot. Okay. Uh, and then... More? Hold on. Are there other... What are <laughs> any other good uh, outfits that you remember? Let's see. Oh, yeah. And then we have some, uh, like, remix of some, uh, some of the original... Like, one of the original, like, demon... Like, it's like the fake demon set or something like that. I forget. But yeah, we have we have some variants of uh, some classic stuff coming back, and then I think actually in the bazaar right now, a bunch of a bunch of stuff is being rotated back from the beginning of the chapter as well. So if you missed out on something, bunch of bunch of older stuff should be coming back uh, for the rest of the season oh, as we well. Oh, did miss something pretty big. Actually. Oh yeah, yeah. What what what? What I missed? Sorry. Well, I guess it's coming up. Hmm? What's your next bet? Because right? right now you've got battle pass on. Right? Yes. Yeah, 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 with the with the changes to progression and all that, or yeah. like the yeah, Ooh, a little Jabal Seg throne. Yeah, um, should we just jump into that? Yeah, let's do it. Topic? Let's just do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so the challenges are changing. Um, we think that as it stands now, it's pretty hard to interact with. Uh, not a lot of people even know it's there, uh, probably. So. We've made some changes to the way battle pass progression and challenges work. Challenges are just weekly sets of challenges. So you'll get three, and that's it. Whenever you complete one, it'll give you 2,500 um, battle pass XP. So you'll get two and a half unlocks. And you don't have to come to this screen to claim it. So if you were to just happen to defeat a demonic animal, which is like one of the uh, like alpha kind of like rare spawns that happen when you farm a population down, um, like uh, they're they're probably not called demonic. It, mm. it would be like the like the alpha hyena, uh, you know, with oh, the, gotcha. the like albino hyena with demonic eyes and stuff. Uh, if you kill one of those, it'll just complete the challenge, and you'll just get unlocks right there. Um, we'll also make it so whenever you mm. play the game, you get XP. So any the the stuff that you do standard that earns you XP in the game, like killing and harvesting and crafting, just doing that will get you battle pass XP now. It's not a one-to-one -one map, but it's really quick. And if you just sit down and play like an hour or two, you're going to get a, a handful of unlocks in that time. Um, <clears throat> completing the challenges, uh, they're, they're a little bit more... They're probably a little more time-consuming now than they were before. We Because there's only three, we want them to be a little bit more difficult to complete. But paired with being you know really naturally completed and the fact that you don't have to go claim them means you'll be doing these a lot more. And we think that a lot more people will be able to finish the battle pass a lot more naturally now, just because all you have to do is play the game. Um, the other, mm -hmm. I think there's one other thing with the battle pass XP and challenges that I wanted to say, but. Let me, give me one second actually, cause I got sure. a nice, really nice primer from one of our producers about it as well. So let me just check here real quick. Yeah, it's really straightforward. Like, you can sit down and play for a little bit, and, oh, I remember what it is. Uh, whenever you actually unlock a tier now, it will appear on screen. So you'll actually see a, a little effect appear on screen. It's only there for about four seconds, and it has a shortcut. It says tier complete. It'll show you. Oh, like, yeah, it actually shows, like, a yeah. little, like, FIFO pop-up, or, sorry, fade in, fade out yeah. uh, pop-up, like, towards the, I mean, you can't really see it. Here it'll show you it'll exactly show like, what's unlocked yeah, and yeah. it'll give you a little shortcut so if you just use interact for the couple seconds when that's on screen it'll take you straight to the battle pass and show you what mm -hmm. what tier has been completed um, and if you don't want to see that at all we added an option in the interface options to turn those toast menus off so if you go to gameplay and just go the whole way down to the bottom there's one for battle pass tier completion toast and if you don't want it to interfere so you play on an RP server you don't care about battle pass at all just turn it off Get out of here. Get out of here. So yeah, basically you can actually yeah, get battle pass progression from yeah. just actually playing the game and doing normal things you would normally do within the game anyway. Yep. Play and then the game, get things. Yep. And then challenges are actually the challenges. Like yep. yeah. Yeah, they're a bonus. A little more pointed. Like we 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 balance around rates that like, you know, we expect people to be at a certain completion point at a certain time during a chapter. And we're you know, trying to take into consideration, 
that you don't need to do challenges that uh, you know the, you should get a, a good amount of unlocks by just playing the game normally and if you you really need to rush or get done in a shorter amount of time having those you know two and a half unlocks uh, with seven and a half per week is a, a big buff You gotta feed the dog. Yeah, yeah. Wait, can he eat it, or does it have to be raw? Does it, yeah. I saw someone on YouTube chat being like, "If you let the dog die, you have to start the entire stream. Oh like my you have God. to redo <laughs> the entire stream." Which I agree with. We would do better the second. We time. would. We would. <laughs> we would. It's correct. There we go. See, oh, good boy. Someone was asking if we could get a, um, a harder difficulty than. <laughs> Huh? So someone's asking if there's like there could be a new difficulty level for Conan Exiles because barbaric is too easy. <laughs> or not? They didn't say that bit, but they're glutton for punishment. I see. That's where server settings. Crom's come. own, yeah. Crom's champion. Oh, I like hardcore that. mode. Make all the characters do a thousand plus a thousand percent damage. Yeah, in the yeah. Server settings. Just give them all guns. Did we not have a permadeath before server? No. No, we haven't had a permadeath server. Um, oh, no, yeah, that's not what I'm thinking of. The only server type we used to have that we don't anymore is the Blitz the servers. Blitz servers, which yeah. Oh. Uh, monthly. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, way back in the day in EOC, we had uh, the Blood and Glory servers, but that's a totally oh, different Oh, maybe that's yeah, what I'm that's thinking. Right. Yeah, that's probably what you're thinking, actually. Yeah, that was, like, the more more hardcore PvP stuff, but, yeah, like, actual... I mean, but, like, the you know, the rules of an MMO and the rules of, a, like, a smaller survival game are uh, pretty different, because, like... A lot of the item drop rules here are very similar to like what you might have seen from like Blood and Glory, where you actually like lose an item. But from an MMO in 2008, that was like much less common than a game like this. Exiles being such a great platform for for mods as well. Like someone could make a permadeath mod mm. so mm -hmm. easily, mm -hmm. and it would it would be there for the extremely small number of people that want to play that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because it it is a very uh, compelling idea. But most people don't want to lose their stuff. Yep. The loss of It's version. for a certain personality yep. type. One that, yeah, is a glutton for punishment. I am sometimes, I think but it's not great. to lose. I, I love risk. I like stakes. <laughs> I mean, I, I like it when stakes are high, but I don't like losing all my stuff necessarily, but I do like a challenge too. That's why I like hard games. It's not like the Soulsy games and all that stuff. Okay. So let's see. Uh, is there any other cool outfits that we should show off really quick? Can you quick? dye that top you're wearing? Is someone is asking? You should be able to. I don't see why not. Oh, maybe not. Uh, you. Hmm. Part, oh, of the I in, part of the inventory management stuff is that we've, we've changed how dyeing works oh, yeah. as well. So you have to go to the bench right now. Oh, to dye. I see. I don't think you can drop the dye on top. Um, we, we went back and forth on that a little bit. Um, but I'm, I'm actually just not sure which functionality actually gotcha. made the final cut. Oh god, what what category was it even under now? I can't even remember. The dryer's bench? Dyer's bench, yeah, that's right. Dunk. Oh, dog I, is in trouble. Dog no, is dying. No. The dog! <laughs> Thank you. No! <laughs> chat was on that. They were had eagle eyes. Thank you. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. What should we name what should we name the dog, chat? I need I need your help helping the dog before the end of the stream. Okay. Item to die. <laughs> dog die. is in peril. <laughs> oh. Hmm. You can name it Twitch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> name it chat. Then you're forced to take care of it. <laughs> Hello? I was going to say, YouTube is here, too. Right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I saw someone in chat be like, did they even read YouTube chat? Like, we do, in fact. I'm looking. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Did it not save? Come on. Twitch and YouTube chat. Smile. There. Yay. Thanks, guys. Good looking <laughs> out for yourselves. Okay. Uh, dies. Dies, dies, dies. Pinku. Pink dye. One hundred of them. Hello? Put them in. Ah. 
I don't know if this is intended, Dennis. It's pink. It's perfect. Why not? Why not? All right, cool. I, sorry, I, I, I misheard you, and I thought that you said that this armor cannot be dyed. Or would no, not I be said dyed. you have to use the bench. Oh, uh, I see. Okay, People gotcha. are also begging you to drink something or turn off or, or do something with your thirst meter. <laughs> there. There. Are you happy? Chat. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend 20 minutes here while people boringly watch me try to dial my armor pink. Anyway, uh, so that's, that's a bunch of the new stuff that we have coming up. Uh, <laughs> do not drink the dog. Someone's saying, <laughs> someone says drink the dog, and someone says do not drink the I dog. I am not going to drink the dog. Mountain dog. I will dog. not. No, Mountain Doge. Got that dog in me. Okay, I do really want to dye everything pink, though. It's like watching paint dry. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's perfect, right? I'm sorry. I know this is like cutting edge, high octane. Are you making the final item in the battle pass secret, or did you want to? Oh, did we want to show that off? You I guess show we... whatever you want. All right. I don't know what the. Uh... All right. Sorry, I have to pinkify everything. <laughs> I know it's very it's very important. <laughs> you see. Oh my god. Oh no! I forgot to get my shoes. Anyway, okay, yeah. <laughs> It's better that way. Yeah. It is. For free? <laughs> just keep it for the free? Grips. The grippers. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's pink. It's all dyed pink still. In the <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it's supposed to look like. Don't worry. Why not? <laughs> Why not? You're right. You're right. Why not? Hee <laughs> hee. Smile. Hi. But yeah, it's a Zingari Mercenary Captain outfit. Uh, let's see if I can show It does it say fancy, someone pointed out. <laughs> Gosh darn right. Uh, I might have already been what I was wearing before, right? You yeah, no, I did have it on. Yeah, my bad, my bad. So that is the final item. There we go, my bad, yep. Minus the pink. There. My battle pal, wait, so, okay, yes. It's very fancy. Quick spoilers of the tableaus. Quick see, quick, quick look at everything. Oh, and just regular mercenary armor. Okay, got it. Cool, great. Hey guys. So yeah, that and more coming at you very soon. Uh, yeah, you can check out all the all the gameplay stuff. Is still in, is already now playable uh, on our public beta, and then all the shop and bazaar stuff. Of course, is not going to be available until uh, this officially releases again, April second. Um. I think that's all I got right now. Gosh, that was uh, that was a lot. Uh, that's that pretty much covers, I think, everything coming in the chapter. Uh, that took over an hour and a half to kind of talk about a bunch of stuff, even though I know I meandered a bunch trying to dye my shit paint or pink. Um, so okay, uh, we do want to take we do want to allow some um, some space for folks to ask questions because I know they have questions, but I think given our time constraints right now, and Dennis, you know, we're all uh, we all have to get back to a couple things. Uh, for work, but uh, we'll be going over social media and our forums and all that. So if you have any specific questions, please, please, please ask away. Um, just like ping away, we have um, we have a discussion mega thread for chapter four in our public beta forum on forums.funcom.com. Just like leave a question at us. Uh, we'll try to collect your questions over social media or here or wherever uh, over the weekend. Um, and then I think next week or the week after we'll try to do like a, like a follow up, like full blown, like questions and answers, uh, like blog post. So yeah, if you have any, if you have any burning questions, please let us know. I'm, I'm sure there's, there's plenty of questions that you wanted to ask, or if you don't, that's fine too. No, no one's got a single no one. No one's got a question. Not a single one. I'm Very not, good. Yeah, no. <laughs> great, great, great. Okay. Well, uh, I think that actually just then that's going to cover it for, uh, today's stream. Uh, geez, oh, yeah, that was a lot. So, uh, final things, I guess, before we head out, some quick housekeeping thingies. Uh, once again, as a reminder, I know I'm a broken record. Uh, public beta is now, for, public beta for chapter four is now available. Uh, you can access it through the public beta client on Steam. Uh, chapter four is uh, coming out officially on April 2nd. Uh, and I think that about covers everything. Uh, just also wanted to give a quick shout out to a uh, couple of our buds. Uh, this is just like a, a lovely little special 
little special request here. So yeah, um, you know, we just wanted to give a special uh, shout out to Vebjorn, and Lift, Misty, and Sean. Uh, if you know, you know. Uh, but we really appreciate all the help uh, you've you've provided. So thank you for that. And I think that's about it on my end. Dennis, anything from you? Anything more from you? No, I'm just really excited to see more people get their hands on the yeah. event. I think it's really fun. It was a lot of fun to make. Uh, you know, we don't get to do very traditionally. Haven't done a lot of VO stuff in, in Exile, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. every time we get to record that, it's it's a ton of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, you know, special thanks to our our the, the our talented voice our uh, voice actor who who yeah. we got a, to get a in ton the studio. Of all of them, yeah, yeah. We we yeah we had a lot of fun making this one. And I think that it'll come across when you guys play it as well. I'm so envious you got to like sit in the studio and like direct some of these folks. It's, it's cool being a game director, isn't it? Yeah, it's the, yeah, it's the cool. name on the. Yeah, it's the, the yeah, yeah. It's very good. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, friends. That about wraps it up from us. And Nicole, anything, oh. anything you'd like oh. to say? Okay. I'm good. Yeah, I know. I just. People are still asking questions, and just can you reiterate that we're going to answer them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I know there's a ton of questions that are coming in. So, yeah, we, we're not going to have time to go over a ton of questions or, you know, go over the questions on stream today. But we will be going over your questions on social media, forums, chat, et cetera. Uh, we'll be collecting them and rounding them up um, over the weekend. Uh, and then we'll be releasing, like, a follow-up to this stream um, uh, to, to work towards answering all your other questions that may have come up. Uh, during this, or if anyone knows, you know, anyone who has had experience with this or any of our content creators want to step in and just, like, try to answer a question, more, feel free. That's totally fine. Okay. Cool. I think that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoy uh, testing and stress testing uh, Age of War Chapter 4. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Have an excellent weekend. And we will see you the next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And then I'm gonna awkwardly awkwardly, awkwardly sign off while we while we speak to things and you know it's it's just uh yeah 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 you know. Anyway, happy Friday. Have a great day. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.